Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanalay the Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury333, who is apparently now in position to Skazi's underwear if Twitch chat or Hitbox chat is to be believed. I don't need it, Skazi. I have plenty of my own. Thank you. Now, let us move on to the game itself Hokomoko vs. Icons on Trojan Hills. And those of you watching on YouTube, yes, this is done live, in fact. I do this live every Saturday. Typically every Saturday. And you can get the schedule if you look, well, on the page itself, really. It's, it's all there. So, without further ado, let's get going. Icons going into the... This is Trojan Hills, by the way. Icons in the southeast corner, which is slightly unusual. And apparently something went wonky. Ah, I see. Icons had waffles. I have no problems with that at all. As long as there was ice cream on the waffles. That is a thing. There's a place, like, two blocks away from my house that serves it. It is awesome. If you ever have the chance to have ice cream on waffles, do so. It is wonderful. But... Both players going for the Cloakie Bot Factory. Ikeen's not going for units. They're opting instead to play, I guess, entirely Commander. They must have figured that Rar had something going for them. Like, it's all I can really figure. They, they, they decided, you know what? That Rar guy, that Rar guy knows what's up. So, as we can see, that is what they're going to do. Anyway. On the other hand, Hokomoko is, in fact, building units. Which is much more sensible, as Ikeen's decides that they want to also build units and actually play the game. So, with that said, I... Hmm. Anyway, Ikens playing... I mean, oh, I was about to say before, the Southeast position is very defensive. Hokumoko's position is also fairly defensive, but I would say less so than the position Ikens is in. Ikens' position is so defensive that it's actually really hard to do anything other than hold the fort in the Southeast corner. Whereas where Hokomoko is, they do have two expansions that are relatively close. I mean, it's not easy necessarily to expand to them, but Icons right now is in a position where they both have to go super far to get to this, the expansions on the south side. They don't have as many expansions nearby up here. Like, this isn't anywhere near as defensible as, say, if they started here, which is a common aggressive position is the southwest or northeast. Because that way, you kind of block off the ramp to the south here, so there's only one path to the south area, both of these south areas that you have to defend. That typically gets attacked. And from there, you also just have a more forward position so you can better take the center. Where Icons is, it's going to be very tricky to push out in any meaningful way. Hokomoko, on the other hand, they can choose which expansion they want to go to. They're probably going to go, and indeed they are going to... The, they are indeed going to the south... Sorry, the northwest which is the equivalent position to Icons right now, but Icons actually surprisingly expanding a bit faster. Despite the fact that their position isn't great for expansion, they are getting into that expansion game far more rapidly. So I'll give them that. I mean, they are at least keeping everything in a relatively good position. And yeah, if you're wondering about the... Yeah, the UI is... It's new! Google Frog did a lot of work to make the UI look pretty, although the Spectator UI is still a little bit of a work in progress. I quite like it, actually. I mean, maybe it could be a bit thinner. That the bars for the resources could possibly be reduced in thickness. Like, I mean, length. But overall, it's fine. I like it. Because everyone's noticing that. And at the same time, what people are not noticing is that Icons is actually managing to hold the center pretty well. Like, what Icons doesn't have in starting position, they've managed to get to an extent in micromanagement. In fact, right now, it's setting up for a, what looks like it could be a devastating assault. Hokomoko's base does have a warrior. Icons needs to attack right now. Actually, well, five seconds ago. Actually, this is too late. In fact, that warrior is basically going to put a stop to these glaives before they even have a chance. Hokomoko, you're... Like, Hokomoko's well aware of these glaives. Like, they, they know they're there. I don't know why Icons didn't just go for the attack. But at any rate, Icons retreating, which is a little sad because they had a wonderful position to start tearing apart everything in Hokomoko's base. Get rid of all this energy infrastructure and... The metal and icons is once again accessing because actually lack of build power not energy not this time at least anyway icons uh, harassment game is pretty on point it's just the problem is they're not they're not really getting a whole lot of economy on their own they're relying entirely on breaking hokomoko's as best as they can and hokomoko right now i mean not really seeming that threatened. Hokomoko is still ahead economically. They're ahead production-wise. I mean, they have 15 metal build power going into their main factory. 
whereas Ikens is still accessing because they don't have a caretaker or a worker or anything into their main factory. So Ikens is going to fall gradually behind in their military, even though they're they are harassing relatively effectively. They are forcing Hokomoko to split the up forces and make it a bit harder for Hokomoko to really deal with the map. Ikens is still like they're calling the shots, but they're only going to call the shots for a few more minutes, if that, maybe one or two more minutes, unless they put a worker on here. I'm not sure what Ikens is trying to do. They're expanding. They're not building a whole lot of energy. They're not using the metal that they have. I mean, once these glaives go away, it's pretty much going to be over. That's all Ikens really has. The Rocco's, I guess they're building up, but Rocco's are really difficult to use nowadays. The, I'm not sure what it is, but unit AI dealing with Rocco's, the actual, the auto, like, look at that. The amount of leading going on, that glaive almost got hit. And this happens all the time. I mean, that one actually was kind of lucky that the Glaive actually managed to get hit. But I was noticing that all the time with Rockos, they do not do a great job shooting units that are moving across their line of fire. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, you'll often see, especially if the Warriors come, you might see them fire a rocket and end up right, like, grazing the front machine guns of the Warrior, but not quite close enough to hit. So Rockos aren't really a unit I'd go for right now. Although that's kind of a hidden behavior thing. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, we are coming up to the Rockos, which... Yeah, what is Icons doing? I'm not sure what the, like, They don't have any workers. That is bizarre. In the front, we do see the Warrior coming in here, and this is exactly what I was talking about here. I mean, I say that and it just gets hit, but yeah, like... There's a few missiles already... A few rockets already that did not properly lead a predictably moving Warrior, so... Not sure what's going on there. At any rate, Ikens, what are you planning? I mean, they're building up this, this northeast side with only their one worker. I don't understand why they aren't building as much. Hokomoko, on the other hand, really should be focusing on how they're building up because they have a worker over in the plateau in the west. They have a worker over to the northeast setting stuff up. They have their main base with a, couple, with a caretaker and a gunship plant, which hasn't started building anything yet, but it will soon. So really, overall, Ikens has been winning just by military luck, almost. But not really winning through any other means. Like their, their economy is falling apart. Their production is way behind Hokomoko. Like, it's a third of Hokomoko's. It's just, Ikens is being really smart about keeping their units alive. And I say that right as a, a giant group of glaives is going to run into lotuses. Actually, they should be able to deal with this. This is no problem. In fact... This is going to be a very productive assault. Losing two glaives... Yes, two glaives. To get rid of a worker and three metal extractors. But mostly get rid of the Conjurer. So Hokomoka's economy getting damaged slightly. And well, still in the main area, in the main lane of the map, there, there is some pressure from Ikens, but this is not going to last. The Rapiers should be able to stop this. Gremlins will be coming up shortly. No, they're not. Gremlins are actually not even in production. So right now, Ikens relying entirely on Rocco's which are performing a bit better than I'd expected, even against micromanaging, well, auto skirming rapiers. So that's certainly kind of effective, but unfortunately there go the Rockas. With that, Ikens loses their entire army pretty much. There's not much left to speak of. And while Ikens does have a decent amount of production, their commander is under basically mortal danger. This, this group of glaives here, if they'd actually go in and attack rather than, you know, go to the side, would have been able to get rid of the commander, but unfortunately too many of them were lost to lotuses with no gain, so that's not going to work so well. Anyway, I can save their commander, finally getting some production into their main base, getting some gremlins as well, which they need, but not getting a whole lot. I mean, right now they have a conjurer coming up a little later, but it's just not the same. Like, they'll need to get that pretty so pretty shortly, because at the moment Hokomoko is rapidly expanding. The command Icons commander about to go down. Icons all this metal is going to go to waste if they lose their commander and don't build another storage in the meantime, which it does not look like they will do. While the Razor has gotten up, and that saves the day, Icons still needs to get something going as far as getting this metal out of the storage. They've been accessing metal the entire game. And they are getting that worked on somewhat at the same time as they're getting the Gremlins. I honestly just get the workers faster. At the very least, get rid of all this excess metal. Hokomoko is also excessing now, but still. Ikens' commander is done. Oh yeah, Ikens needs more energy. That's the other thing. As always, as always, Ikens needs more energy. 
They really need to have put that chat little chat bot thing they had on before, that widget that told them more energy back on, because they need more energy. Way more energy. In fact, I'm not sure why they're not building wind generators. They have all these solar plants. This map is wind generators. I'm best surprised Icons didn't actually build storage in the meantime, though. Like, oh crap, my commander is under heavy threat. I should build storage so that I don't completely run out of the metal I'm accessing. Like, that's a thing you can do. That's the point of... Or part of the point of the commander storage change. Part of it is to make everything on map. Part of it is so that the storage building is actually not totally useless. At least in 1v1. Or outside of weird tricks. Anyway, Hokumoko is still having to put up with this. Throwing units one at a time into the center. There's a rally point there that should not be there. Like a fight rally point coming off the factory. That is a mistake. Like this is the only thing that Icons needs. This is what Icons needs is a steady stream of units coming in here. And that will do the trick. And the warrior doing it. Pretty good job, actually, getting rid of... Ooh, getting rid of one Conjurer, getting rid of another Conjurer, although at the moment, Icons doesn't really need that much production. Their economy is not doing well. Where... Okay, the factory's gonna go down! That is the Cloakybot factory down. Icons losing most of their main base, and... At this point, all of their production right now. Throwing in the towel, that is game. Hokumoka taking it, which, even though Hokumoka was feeding units, was not really gonna make a difference. However, honestly, Icons... Had they built more power and built more production structures in their main base, assuming they were able to micromanage the units as well as they had up to that point, and have the proper tactical considerations as the scale as the unit count scaled up, they'd have won that game handily. It really came down to a lack of production. I Icons was being extremely efficient with their units. They hardly lost any at the beginning. They had, I mean, they actually had a really solid rating setup that would have possibly broken Hokomoko five minutes into, or two minutes into the game, really, but didn't go forward with it. And that that caution, while it did lose them the game to an extent, I mean, if they had done it wrong at the wrong timing, it would have lost them the game right then and there, or at least made it much harder to get back in. So, that level of caution, alongside a healthy economy, a healthy production, Icons would have easily had that game. At any rate, Icons, are you going to throw in the towel or not? Because this is... It's clear you've lost. There it is, okay. So, let's see what the excess value is. Icons excessed 5,000 metal compared to Hokomoko's 1,400. And if we look in the metal, I mean... Yeah, metal production was relatively similar up until the point that the commander died. Metal production was about the same. Metal income wasn't. Actually, no, metal income was relatively similar. It was near the end that it got differentiated, but even then, metal production was very similar. Metal used, however, holy crap! After only four minutes, no, three minutes into the game, Icons just was excessing. Yeah, three minutes into the game, Icons excesses forever, and energy income, yeah, around the same point, well, it's around here-ish. Yeah, this is around energy income gets completely static. Like, Icons stops building power, and they start excessing forever, but they also weren't actually using the metal they had. It wasn't even a matter of not having the metal, or not having the energy to spend the metal. It was not having the build power to spend the metal. Which, yeah, that's not what you want at all. So anyway, that was that. I hope you enjoyed that. I will be back with another game in a couple minutes. It will be a game between... Dying Freund and North Chilean G on Obsidian. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.